I just had a request from one of the students from Parkside behind me just before we get too far from the buses and he said in all his experience and he takes the school bus there's never any issues down at the buses so just from a student's perspective you. you may begin whenever thank you're you ready. so much uh, my name is Di I don't have any slide project oh you've got my words up there oh. <laughs> there you go um, <laughs> Do I even need to do this? Okay, my name is Diana Kennel. I'm a chartered accountant and the owner of a local small business in Flamborough. We have three children with the youngest now in grade 10 at Parkside. I was not on the art committee, but I have attended all of the working group meetings, including the presentation meeting that went until midnight. I have spoken at the public meetings and have submitted proposals through correspondence throughout this process. I believe that in order to make good, thoughtful decisions in matters of such great importance, that you need to have thorough, complete, and factual information. I am here tonight to make sure you get that. Our trustee, Jessica Brennan, told us to make sure our presentations covered the issues of programming, accessibility, and financing, as these are the areas that the trustees take very seriously and want to make good decisions on. These are the areas, therefore, that this presentation will focus on. One of Parkside's greatest strengths is its location in the core of Dundas, unlike Highland, which is located on the outskirts of town. Parkside's unique location allows phenomenal accessibility to the students with almost 100 diverse co-op placement opportunities within five to 10 minutes walk of the school, covering the following programming areas. Accounting, art, banking, carpentry, clerical, computers, construction, cook training, dental, ECE, fashion, firefighting, floral design, hairstyling and cosmetology, history and museum science, interior design, journalism, legal, marketing, mechanical and auto, medical, pharmacy, physiotherapy, police, recreation, retail, social work, teaching and veterinary. The source for this information was Parkside's co-op placement master list provided by John Malpass, the co-op teacher. This incredible list of options for the students provides them with real world experience, mentorships and apprenticeships that enhance their in-school learning and expose them to possible job opportunities and future career options. They also cover all educational levels from workplace preparation and skilled trades through to academic careers. And because of the close proximity to school, all students are able to participate if they want to and make it back to school in time to catch the bus home. Placements are not just limited to students whose parents can drive them during the day. This is the case for families with working parents and also has significant impact on at-risk kids who may not have family support for getting to such placements if drives were necessary. As a result of accessibility to this programming opportunity at Parkside, over 35% of students participate in a co-op placement by the time they graduate. And a figure I calculated this weekend, Parkside has a 45% higher co-op participation rate when compared to Highland. The program is always full at its allotted 110 students per year with a grade 11-12 population this year of 312 students. With additional supervising teachers, the participation rate could be even higher. Co-op placement opportunities have built-in flexibility to change as, as businesses change and adapt to the current and future marketplace, which allows for tremendous flexibility of programming offerings through these community partnerships without having to make expensive in-school changes that so often become quickly, quickly obsolete. With high co-op participation rates at Parkside, I'd like to point out that this also reduces the need for in-school desk spaces. At the February 13th presentation meeting here, the one that went to midnight, I noted that Director Malloy stated that, quote, we don't need to accommodate 100% of the students at a school all of the time, i.e. one desk for every student. That with co-ops, virtual learning, e-learning, and self-paced programs, it can be much less, end quote. This is very much the case at Parkside and explains why the school has over 1,100 
full-size lockers, and even recently had over 900 students at the school, despite the board saying we only have an on-the-ground capacity of 777. The reality is with timetabling adding 15% capacity and co-ops adding a, a further 15% while maintaining the average class size of 21 students required by the board, Parkside, as it stands today, has a functional capacity of over 1,000 students. A further point related to programming is the technology schism offered at Highland that is often discussed. Parkside was built as a fully comprehensive high school capable of handling all typical high school programming. A little known fact is that Parkside actually has four original tech shops on the lower wing where the wood shop is. All have outdoor access and the high 14 foot ceilings. Once Highland opened as a two year tech school a few years after Parkside, those classes were moved there and the rooms have been used for other classes. But they could now be brought back to their original function as tech shops and therefore Parkside would be able to continue to offer the technology schism for students if Highland were to close. The one course that requires a large amount of space and expensive equipment is the auto class. At Parkside, students obtain those credits through co-op placements or apprenticeships at one of the several auto garages affiliated with Parkside within walking distance of the school. There is no need for the board to invest in such expensive equipment and resources when state-of-the-art facilities are already available through community partnerships. The success of Parkside and its diverse programming opportunities for its students can actually be demonstrated by the fact that it is the only school from the four West Arc schools we are considering to be on the Fraser Institute's top 10 school list for all of the last five years. In relation to financing co-op participation by virtue of the fact that it makes use of community partnerships saves the board money. Parkside also has lower current renewal needs of $5 million compared to Highland, which has over 11.6 million in current renewal needs. Parkside is in better shape overall and will therefore cost the board less money. Also, an area the board has not clarified with regards to its option is the almost $9 million in unfunded renovations scheduled for Highland. The board proposed $15 million be spent with $5 million possible from the province and $1.6 million from the sale of Parkside, leaving almost $9 million unfunded. To put this into context for you, this represents the amount spent on capital expenses at all four West Arc schools for the last four years combined. Yet they are proposing to spend this all at Highland in the next two years. Where is the extra money going to come from? your school's budgets? With the Highland property being worth $8.9 million, all necessary additions and renovations to Parkside could be self-funded from within Dundas without touching the budgets of the other West Arc schools or other schools in the board, even, even if ministry money doesn't come through. Tim Leslie, who is an architect and presented just before me, showed you that all the necessary classrooms can be added to the site to reach the 53 instructional spaces that were proposed for Highland by the board and take care of many of Parkside's renewal needs. And most importantly, it can all be paid for, if necessary, from the sale of the Highland property. Add to that the 100-year lease agreement the board has for Parkside's use of the 26-acre driving park for its recreation and outdoor education programming and busing drop-off and pick-up space for the cost of $1 per year. And Parkside is the model of efficiency and cost containment in addition to being a 21st century school that provides the very best in programming and accessibility for its students that as a bonus protects the social and economic interests of the town of Dundas and ensures that its rich 200-year history continues well into the future. Thank you so much.
questions for clarification? I'll let Trustee Orman. Thank you so very, very much Thank you. for your presentation. Um, I'd like to ask in terms of walking. I, I know your students are bus, but I, I get, I'm trying, I'm almost answering my own question. Are they bus within the community itself there, those students? Well, just based on my experience, we live on the outskirts of um, rural Dundas, so actually still within Dundas. So my children are bused. Um, I know the catchment that comes from Mill Grove and, um, and Greensville are bused, uh, but the urban Dundas population walks. So in terms of, Mr. Chair, percentage of the students that attend Den uh, a Parkside, how many of them walk? What percentage do you um, have an idea? I'm trying to think how many buses we have. I think, is it? I think it's eight or nine buses. The rest are all walkers. Yeah, yeah. well, if the school is located in the urban part of, of Dundas, so um, the, a large part, but then we also encapsulate other, um, the rural, yeah, not the rural even parts of Dundas, there are parts of Flamborough, actually, um, that, um, that attend? that come down. Now I know Trustee um, Turkster was mentioning that it's possible the Mill Grove catchment that uh, there might be large numbers of those students uh, because Waterdown High School is so much closer to them. Uh, apparently the catchment has been opened up to that population to reduce transportation times. They're considering going uh, to Waterdown. So that may actually reduce some of the number of students coming from Flambro, but I'm. Thank I thank you kindly. Okay, you're very welcome. much. Looking for a motion. Trustee Brennan, seconded by Trustee White. Uh, all those in favor of receiving. And we have Trustee Hicks in Mulholland, in the other room. Uh, Tracy. Okay, sorry. Can you continue? Yes. Moved by Trustee Brennan and seconded by Trustee White. It's unanimous with Trustee Hicks and Mulholland, in the other room. Thank you. And I'd like to thank you for, uh, for coming to speak thank with you. us today. Thank you for the opportunity.